and see you're gonna put back my brightness where it was okay there you go watch this this is f8 folks look at the difference in feel of view that we're getting this is very very impressive Hey, George, you ready to arm wrestle now? <laughs> oh, it's huge. It's huge. Okay, so this is N3 at F8. Wow. 12 second exposure right now. And uh, let me see if this thing is tracking right. Well, now you could see uh, the, um, the guider doesn't track very well. It's, it's going pixel to pixel, and you see the picture move. Now, this is 12 seconds at F8, and I've got the gamma at 45. If I put it at gamma 1 like it was, that's the result we're getting. So that means the system is a lot less uh, sensitive. I cannot use gamma 1 whatsoever here. So we're going to have to go back to gamma 45 to see something. And you see more angle as well. Okay, so now we've got the actual difference in focal reducers. And take a, take, take a note of uh, the stars right across the field. Now, this is F8, full F8. 12 second exposure. And how can you know that I'm not pulling your legs about the 12 seconds? Easy. Just watch the next time the um, image goes fuzzy a little bit because of the poor tracking of an EQ mount. <clears throat> Uh, in fact, I think I'm gonna hit it. I don't know if it's gonna help. Maybe that's why it doesn't track. Well, there you go. I just hit it. Let's see how long it's gonna take. Wow, pretty solid though for an EQ, I gotta admit. Okay, the image is fuzzy right now, so what we need to do is count. Okay, I actually hit this thing pretty hard and it didn't even move. All right. It's not bad at all. So this is F8 at the moment, and look at all the uh, warm and hot pixels popping out. It's because the F the the camera now is looking for a signal, basically. And this is what the AP, the APC does. The uh, uh, the um, the DSP is doing. It's looking for a bright signal, and it's trying to bring those signal stronger, brighter than than possible. And to tell you the truth, those stars are much are not much more brighter or a little bit more brighter than the hot pixels are. Look at all the, the warm and hot pixels all over. Mind you, I've got the cooler set at the, at the minimum uh, settings, but when we were with the F, uh, with the focal reducer, we didn't have that at all. Okay, so this is F8. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna stop this and uh, go back to uh, the focal reducer and maybe somebody could measure what the uh, the field of view is actually and uh, that'll give us an idea and it might even give us an idea what the actual F ratio is I'd be very curious to know if somebody could do that but nonetheless this is F8 at the moment and we can see the tracking error and uh, that is uh, thanks to uh, AQ mount that's guided on top of that <clears throat> George anyways we are going to stop the uh, the countdown right now this is 12 second exposure and we're gonna uh, reinstall again uh, the uh, we're gonna reinstall the focal reducer the eight element focal reducer bear with me for a moment folks we are going to be right back watch this this is interesting very interesting and Chris, I'm telling you, the, uh, the feel flattener in there is amazing because we get to focus exactly where the scope was designed to focus at, not outside that focus range. That's why it is so successful. It's perfection uh, in focal reducers that no one has ever come out on the market in the world.
Okay, this is uh, with the focal reducer, and let's bring that up to 12 seconds. And as you can see, the uh, difference is amazing. M3 was covering the whole field of view, and now it covers just one little tiny area. And uh, here comes the exposure. Look at that. I left every adjustment the way it was compared to at f8 and this is overexposed and what I need to do now is switch gamma 45 down to gamma 1 I couldn't do that earlier I tried it and everything got dark so the single to noise ratio is improved and guess what take a look at all those hot pixels she was how come they're gone now and they uh, and the warm pixels only the major hot pixels are there what I've been saying to years to you folks about what the uh, DSP inside the camera does, it looks for a signal. In other words, light's got to strike on the sensor. Once it does, the DSP, the, uh, DSP inside the camera will make the difference between the warm and hot pixels, and it's going to bring out the image as bright as possible for you. Except there is some hot pixels that are brighter. That's, not, that's nothing we could do because they're permanently lit. But this is what the idea of a video camera is. Other video cameras cannot do that. A USB camera cannot do that because they don't have that type of electronics inside of the camera. And this is what you pay when you get a premium camera. Now, if you got the right f focal ratio, this is the type of result you're going to get. This is absolutely beautiful. This is really, really, really nice. Very impressive. And now I, I have to tone down um, the uh, the brightness. And because of that, because the single and why now watch this. How how strange it is. At F8, we're able to see the amp glow at 12 seconds. How come we're not seeing it now? simply because the signal that we're feeding the, the CCD sensor, basically the light entering through the scope, going through the focal reducer, has increased so much in brightness that the DSP inside the camera picks that up and we get to adjust the background of the image where there's no anglo and the remaining hot pixels, that's what they are, they're just casual hot pixels more than anything else compared to what we saw earlier at F8. And that was proof that the DSP works inside of the camera. That's what you get when you pay $1,400, $1,500, $1,600 for a camera. It works for you, but you also got to work for it. In other words, get the right F ratio, get the right focal reducer. Don't cut back on cheap ones they sell everywhere else. Get the right stuff that will work for your camera and your optical tube and you're done with for life. It's going to work for you for life. It's a unit you're going to keep forever. Not sure yet. I'm, I'm hoping... You know what I was planning to do? Uh, Bootinator. <laughs> I've got to love your name. We're, we're coming out with something soon, okay? And I was going to release it at the same time. But I think the pile of email I got since yesterday are just amazing. Uh, I, we're going to start production of it this week, actually. Uh, production is going to start this week. I'm hoping to have some made so Jack could have them for Egvar. So Egvar is in September. I'm hoping by end of September uh, we're going to be able to, uh, to have a, a small amount of them. Uh, we're going to need to get the lens made. I've got about a dozen lens of each made already. Uh, we need to get the uh, machining done as well. That's nearly done. Uh, we're, we're in the works for that. I, I was hoping for end of September uh, that would be ready uh, to uh, uh, to be um, available. I can't wait to try this on the moon, actually. Uh, right now, uh, if I go by what Jack told me yesterday, we're looking at about 34 arc minute across diagonally. So that's more than half a degree using an 8 inch scope George I would love to try it out did you see how long it took me to get the M3 two and a half hours I just happened to have patience tonight with my mouth because this thing would have really been out out the door in the path of my tractor to bring it over at 
you know, in St. Lawrence River for someone to use it as a boat anchor, because I think that thing is just good for that. But anyway, don't get me going there, George. For Pete's sake. Oh, boy. I got to calm down here. All right. Alt has rules, and we're going to arm wrestle over it. You'll see. One of us will end up in the hospital with a dislocated shoulder, but that's okay. <laughs> I have the patience of the world, George, but when it comes to EQ mount, no way. Not anymore. That's why I gave up on them years ago. I'm going to repeat what I said yesterday, George. With the technology of today, I cannot comprehend why companies cannot come out with a field rotator built in their, their optical tubes. Me did it years ago. Nobody caught on. They didn't realize what was happening because a few on the internet says, oh, they're no good. They suck. Blah, blah, blah. Well, in fact, no, they are good. It's just they didn't want to give up their old fashioned, antique, very old, 100 years old design EQ mount. Professional observatories nowadays use Altaz. It's more solid, it's more stable, and you use modern, latest technology field rotator to compensate for the Earth's rotation. It works wonders. I have one on my 16 inch. I swear by it. Once you try this, you don't want to go back to an EQ mount. Trust me. I'm trying hard here. I'm trying very, very, very hard. The only thing I'm enjoying of this EQ mount is the auto guiding. That is cool, very cool, and I like it. But it's as far as it's gonna go. Yep, tuning fork, I'll take on any time of the day. I tell you, those fork mounts are the way to go. But anyways, we're not going to talk about this because we'll never end. You're going to hate me by the time I'm done broadcasting. Probably do as it is anyways. <laughs> but we're going to come back on the focal reducer, folks, to get serious here. And uh, definitely this is the, uh, this is the most um, advanced focal reducer ever produced by anyone or by any companies. Uh, again, the... Uh, amount of time that we put into this, that I've put into this, I took out on my own to uh, to get the ultimate. I've been, I've been after this for quite some time. But only in the past year, uh, I've been uh, deciding to uh, tackle it again using larger size lens. They are two inch, like just under two inch in size. And it, it's quite heavy. The unit is heavy. It's not a lightweight. And uh, it's quality throughout, of course. We're gonna make sure that the optics are well tested on the optical bench at work. And frankly, what I've tested at work um, on the optical bench, the result I got on that are very, very, very close to what we're getting here tonight and what we got also last night. So that's, uh, that's good news uh, uh, on that. Oh no, Joe, there's nothing wrong with us Altaz guys. Altaz rules. You just wait when I boot this thing out of here and go with the, well, you know, the LX200 uh, mount, uh, uh, yeah, you'll see what I mean. Yeah, the, actually, Joe, the focal reducer works wonderful. It's, uh, it's everything what it was designed for, uh, perfectly flat right across. No vignetting. For me, it's the vignetting that bugged the crap out of me. And also the, you know, also the coma, of course. Uh, it all comes with it. And uh, uh, wow, now we're seeing a difference from F8 to F whatever it is. Uh, I haven't figured it out yet, but so far, calculation I did earlier, uh, uh, the actual unit can go down to about F2.6 easily. And still, yeah, oh yeah, it's still sharp, Chris. Hey, Chris, you got eight elements there. There's eight pieces of glass going through. So it, they are so well balanced as far as distance, optics. Uh, look, look at the quality of the, of, the, uh, of the final live image here. And this is only 12 seconds of ex, uh, exposure. 
And of course, we don't see the error of the tracking compared to F8. So not only it's going to give you a wider field of view, but it's going to give you the ability to not see the accuracy or the, the, the non-accuracy of the EQ mount. That's the beauty of it. So it's going to help all you guys with EQ mounts. You won't be able to see the inaccuracy of, of an EQ mount. That's great. Okay, Chris, I wouldn't mind finding out. Uh, I know Joe tried yesterday, but I never got the answer. I think it's computer crash. Uh, Jack did a, a rough idea. Diagonally, he uh, obtained, uh, I believe it was um, 34 degrees, uh, no, um, 34 arc minute diagonally. And about 30, yeah, 34, 34 arc minute. And that's a little over uh, half a degree from an 8 inch. That's, uh, that's amazing. That I'm not sure, Bootinator, I am not sure. Uh, if your DK focuses at a specific point at the back of the scope, technically speaking, it should work. But you got to think of uh, the DK system. They use an internal lens in there to correct as well. So that would be uh, a good idea to try it out. Honestly, uh, I cannot uh, answer yes or no on that. But the success of that, why this focal reducer works well, it focuses within the range of what your scope was made to be at. You know what I mean? That uh, your focal point is, I don't know, 8 inch out, 7 inch out of the optical tube. You're going to get that focus point the same way with that focal reducer. Focal reducer, normally, you need a lot more in focus by inches. That's why you need to raise a main mirror of a Newtonian by at least an inch, an inch and a half. Hey, that's a lot. If we get to focus within uh, what the scope was designed for, we're good to go. I just measured it on the focuser here when I was racking it in, uh, inward a little bit more on the uh, uh, RC that I'm using here, and I only went in about uh, half an inch, three quarters of an inch more uh, from being at the full point focus without the uh, the uh, focal reducer. So I mean, it's just uh, it's just a touch up that it's going to be needed. I think so too, uh, Bootnator. I don't know what your first name is, but I think so too. Uh, honestly, and uh, I, I'd be curious for someone to try that out on a, on a DK. Uh, uh, Bob, okay, sounds good, Bob. And uh, I'd be curious to know. It's Bobster. He fooled me, the guy. Jeez. All right. And I don't want to arm wrestle. All right. Well, we'll settle that. You'll see. You fool me. <laughs> I don't mean you, Bob. Oh, man, these guys are killing me tonight. No, 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 George. You don't get it, do you? I'm going to practice on Bob first, and by the time I get to you, we'll see who's going to win either EQ mounts or Altaz mounts. I am, I'll tell you right away, I'll pass for sure. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> yeah, but short little Sicilian, they sure pack a punch, these little guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh my oh my you're killing me but anyways uh, guys uh, to come back on the subject it's uh oh boy sorry about that i'm delighted to see the uh, the results here my next step what i would like to try is actually uh to set up the i know it's going to work on on rcs 
and here, here's the thing here about uh, reach and create optics. You are not supposed to use a focal reducer on those because they simply do not work. The maximum you're going to use is a 0.75, which they make those already. We have those. They work fine. Uh, but they never, never, ever give you the feel of view of what you're seeing here. So if it works on the Riche Chrétien, I'm pretty well convinced this is going to work on the uh, on the DK. I'm pretty sure it's going to work on the Edge from Celestron as well. I'd be dying to know. And uh, obviously we're going to be looking for volunteers for uh, for the tryouts. And uh, that's I'm going to post that on the uh, the Malacam Yahoo group. Any volunteer that would like to try one of those. To let me know, we're going to assemble one, and uh, we need to have a test out on a uh, Edge Optics by Celestron, and also on a DK uh, uh, Doc Hercam Optics. Uh, again, I'm I'm pretty well convinced it's going to work out because they focus exactly where the optical tube was uh, designed to focus at. You don't need to go outside the range, like a Barlow, for example, or uh, another type of focal reducer. You need to focus outside of that range. And the result, that's why you get coma, that's why you get vignetting, and you need to have uh, highly corrected optics inside the focal reducer and a field flattener, and obviously this is the answer here. Yeah, I've got the mean ACF, uh, not a problem. I've got a 10 inch, I've got a 14, and and my latest one was the, the 16. So I, I, I have that covered there, Craig, sorry about that. Yeah, 14 inch too, that'll work, uh, Joe. Well, Joe, that's what I'm using now. It's a half-inch chip. Uh, Joe, that's exactly what uh, what what I'm using uh, now is a half-inch chip. The ex uh, oh crap, that's not the exterminator that I'm using. It's the extreme. It still is a half-inch chip. It's going to work uh, from quarter-inch, third-inch, half-inch, three-quarter-inch sensors and uh, up to nearly an inch, just below an inch. Uh, that'll give you a hint of what's coming out. And uh, we got to get ready for this. And uh, I know the Attic, uh, Attic and uh, Starlight Express guys with their A25 chip. This is going to be the focal reducer they're going to need. Uh, whatever they like it or not, they want perfect optics. They want a perfect layout, a perfect uh, way how it's going to uh, display their sensor the best. And get the lowest F ratio possible. This is the way to go. Oh, no, I'm not moving the dome. That's a good idea. Hang on a sec. Oh, crap. Maybe I need to move it. Oh, there you go. I need to move the dome. I just did now. There you go. Oh, we see uh, trees now and clouds coming in. All right. Because of the... Uh... Oh, noise in the woods? Oh, maybe it's that uh, animal that's been throwing down our bead bird feeders. Or it could be uh, a wolf again or a big fat raccoon, one or the other. Well, right now we're seeing a bit of clouds and we're seeing through Oh, I don't know if you hear that. This is the train going by uh, about two and a half, three miles away. Nasty highway. The 401's the best highway there is, George. What are you talking about? Yes, the Trans Canada, the 401. North America's busiest highway. 450,000 cars to 500,000 cars a day. Transports, cars, goes on that highway. I'm not too far from it. Lucky you, I'd love to live nearby the 401. I love the 401. Everybody hates it.
Yeah, it is low. It is low number. On average, four hundred and fifty thousand. That's nearly half a million cars a day, and uh, that's more than one of the highway out in uh, Los Angeles. I think it is. Is another highway that's pretty busy out there. Oh, okay, George. Uh, then in this case, uh, uh, I feel bad for you. Time to move like I did and go in the country like I did. Oh, Port Hope's nice, actually. It's very, very nice out that way, George. I think you'd like it out there. I like Port Hope. It's nice. Yeah, well, me too. It's 11 o'clock, folks, and the object is going in the trees or clouds, whichever it is. But we have witnessed what F8 and what F3.2 point something does. And uh, hopefully uh, Jack documented that somehow and uh, looking forward. And I'm going to keep uh, you guys posted on when this thing is going to come out. I think it's pretty well ready. I need to do four, uh, a few more tests on various scope and see what the results are going to be. I don't want to rush to get that out yet, but uh, uh, it's the world's best and the world's first true F3.3 and even more than that. As I said, calculation that I've done so far today uh, were about F2.6. And I wouldn't be surprised this is what we're having tonight. I'm going to know more about it this week. I'm going to do precise measurement on the optical bench and uh, pass on exactly what it is. Yeah, it is. It's a two inch. So you need a two inch focuser. So the whole unit slides in there and at the back of it, there's an inch and a quarter hole. So you get to put your camera in there with an inch and a quarter uh, barrel and uh, you tie it up and you're good to go. That's correct. That's exactly what it is. It has a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's an inch and a quarter input, just the same way uh, our Barlow would have. Uh, when you insert a Barlow, for example, you put it in your optical tube and you put your eyepiece at the other end. Same idea, but it's a two-inch format. It's all black and it's got multiple stage. You can take it apart and reposition the lenses to suit your scope, actually. And this is why we need to work on a little bit more. And there's no vignetting at all, zero. And uh, even on the 16 inch that I have, I was amazed. I did not have any vignetting at all with this thing. I couldn't be happier uh, for that. It is unbelievable, Bob. Uh, my 16 inch is a hard, I got a hard head telescope and it's, it's on an Altaz mount, believe it or not. The tracking is incredible. The go-to or the die for, they're giving me a bit of an, a problem. But when it comes to focal reducer, She's a, uh, uh, she's a bugger to get a focal reducer happening on it. And I always got massive vignetting, and this is what pushed me also to, to design something that is, uh, that's going to come out, and uh, it's going to be well worth it. So the two inch turns into an inch and a quarter. You can only use an inch and a quarter. In other words, a sensor up to three quarters of an inch has to use a C-mount type, which is inch and a quarter, barrel, and... A little bit bigger than that also can be used, but it's an inch and a quarter at the back. You've got no choice at the moment, anyways. We might, uh, I might work on adapters to fit, uh, uh, let's say, a T-mount or something like this. I haven't tried that out yet. I'm not that far in the game yet. Uh, right now, what I'm concerned is video cameras of a quarter inch, one third inch, half inch, three quarter inch sensors. It's going to cover it all. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh yeah. Well, other companies come out with cameras to compete with the Madeline cam. Here we are coming out with a focal reducer to adapt their camera to work. It's not funny a little bit. But anyways, it is what it is. All right, folks, we're going to pull the plug. Uh, I got animals wandering around here. Mitch, I'm coming in too, so uh, uh, just give me the time to shut down both domes and unplug the power and everything else and put the alarm on. Uh, Mitch, I'm coming in, so uh, I'll be in there. And uh, Tom, thank you for being here. Craig, thank you. Budinator, Bob. 
This is pretty cool. Chris, of course, thank you so much for being here. Mike in uh, South New Jersey, I believe it is. Uh, George, of course, uh, I haven't forgot about you. And Jack, we're gonna, I'm going to talk to you in the morning. I'll be on Skype in the morning. I got so many things to do. I don't know if I'll be going in town, but I'll be on Skype with uh, with the alien wear. So we'll try that tomorrow morning. And um, oh, what else there is out there? There's Richard.